The following interview was conducted with Kumars Sinha, the Edgar and Hedwig Olson Distinguished Professor of Civil Engineering for the Purdue University Oral History Program. It took place on Tuesday, April 3, uh, 2012 in Stewart Center, Swain, in the Archives and Special Collection. The interviewer is Catherine Marquis. Good morning, Professor Sinha, and thank Good you very morning. much. Let's talk a little bit about your early years and okay. where you were born. Uh, I was born in uh, uh, India, uh, uh, northwest of Bengal, and it, India was not divided at that time. The British were still running, and my grandfather, my mother's f uh, father, was a uh, uh, sort of district uh, magistrate, and uh, he was in northwest Bengal, and I was born in a town called uh, Rongpur, which is located now in East uh, Bengal, which is Bangladesh. So uh, when I did some work for uh, World Bank in one of my trips, uh, I was in Bangladesh. I said, uh, well, then they found out where I was born. So every place I went from Dhaka, their capital, the word already went uh, out that there is someone of us has come back. <laughs> so they claim me as one A native of them. son has that's returned. That's right. <laughs> and I did go to see uh, uh, that place uh, in 90s, 91 and 92. And they told me, showed me the area where perhaps, uh, or the area where the government officials lived, but they could not tell exactly where, what house, but they said that was the official, you know, the uh, is to leave. And I was born at home in my grandfather's house, and uh, I don't have any birth certificate to prove that when I was, so that's why it's kind of murky uh, exactly when I was born. If there is a record what they my- They don't record. It's, it's, don't. it's not ever been recorded. So also I did not go to school right away. It's very unusual. I was a home taught <laughs> until I was 14. My mother taught me, and so I... What, uh, did, what business did your father do? What, what was my he father was a lawyer. Okay. But that was the system, even today, that um, uh, when the daughters are going to have babies, they go to their parents' place, so, and then they stay there for a while. Okay. And um, uh, so uh, the age that was given when I was enlist or enrolled in school that's the age, the date of birth I carry in my passport, and it, then it has become naturalized, the whole thing. There is no way I can prove anything else. There's nothing, no record. And my mother is dead, parents are dead, my you know, uh, siblings are, are all passing away. So uh, I was born in 1942, according to the records, and July 12th, and... Um, uh, I did not go to school, uh, I told you, that until I was 14. And I, ca uh, I come from a family of seven. Where do you uh, range? Middle. Middle. Okay. Middle child. I have three sisters and three brothers. But uh, sister passed away, my older sister. And um, uh, I'm the third son. But interestingly, all my brothers and sisters went to school much earlier than I did, and I stayed home. I don't know why, because I guess I was a sickly child. My parents thought I wouldn't be able to handle going to school. <laughs> so my mother taught me, and uh, I must tell you that uh, if you ask me who was my hero, my mother was my hero. Good. And, and uh, it's, it's uh, just unbelievably, unusually talented person I've ever met in my life. She never finished high school, by the way. She was a self-taught uh, person, and uh, her knowledge was infinite, and ability to uh, sing, tell stories, write, just unbelievable. If she were born in some other part of the world, or you know, in a Western world, she would be somebody very well known and contributing. Very nice. So my mother was my hero, which despite lots of uh, misfortunes and difficulty, etc. And she, she, was, she lived until she was 87. 
and even the last day she could uh, sing songs and spontaneously and love for life and uh, uh, she's just my hero yeah and uh, my siblings are uh, they all live around calcutta that's where i actually was uh, uh, that the town i said it's near calcutta and uh, 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 and my family is from calcutta area and uh, so uh, uh, they're all scattered around Calcutta. I went to school in a place called Howrah, which is the western uh, suburb of uh, Calcutta. Was this, would this be for high school then? High, or, high school, or high school? Yeah, okay. the three, three years. Well, it was 10th um, like, um, uh, grade, then two more years you go to a college, intermediate college, before I went to engineering. So actually I went five, in American context, five years in school, last five years. I went three years in high school, 10th grade, and then that's matriculation, and then you go to intermediate science, and, uh, or arts, I went science, and then I went to uh, uh, university near Calcutta, Jadupur University, and uh, um, it has a very long history of um, uh, uh, you know, Indian independence movement. Um, this university was born, uh, 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 the nationalists uh, started that. So it was not accredited uh, early days in 1930s, 20s, 30s, 40s. In 1950s, after India became independent, is one of the first universities uh, that was uh, mm -hmm. uh, regu made regular. It's very well known now. Tell us a little about college. Uh, did you live on campus? No, 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 no. Okay. I come from very, very, that's the thing. And it was close for you to and get No, home. no, no, no. When I, uh, uh, my father was a lawyer, but he was not a very successful lawyer. <laughs> so we had a very difficult time. We grew up uh, uh, with a lot of difficulty. It, it was very, very difficult. And uh, I, I went through in high, high school, intermediate college, and also in engineering college, all the way I was uh, in a scholarship with the money that I got. Without that, I would not be able to make it. So when I finished intermediate, I was uh, generally a good student, and uh, uh, I went and myself, because after I finished high school, I could not see how my family could send me to college and a good student, like my, with my record, would go to would go to a very good college, like Presidency College in Calcutta. I could never uh, imagine of going there, so I took it upon myself. I was 18 years, less than 18, went to the house of the principal, principal of the local college, where people don't really go there. You know, good student. And I went there, and I just I had a lot of lot of uh, what should I say? Lots of gumption. I went on my own. I took my all my records, and I said, "Sir, uh, I am I have just finished in high school. This is my record. I want to go to your college. Would you take me free?" He, the guy, <laughs> it's a private institution. He, you know, this and that. He said, well, you know, if you come with your record, then somebody comes, has 20 more points, then he will ask me to give him money to come. What can I do? I said, well, I don't know about other people. If you don't, I cannot go to college. If you do, I can go to college. I can guarantee you I'll do well. He said, okay, I'll take you. And that's where I started. I was very, very, with a lot of gumption, you know. Uh, lot of, sure uh, did. That's, well, up front, I'll tell you, I, I go back to not just India, many other places in developing world, and I see lots of talented people, lots of brilliant people. They're in a miserable job, government job, forever doing. And I ask myself, what is the difference between them and me? You know, is it just the grace of God or what? And I find, well, I did, and one of my friends, you know, pointed out to me from the, and I do a lot of work for the World Bank. So World Bank friend pointed out to me. He said, no, what's the difference between these people and you? You had the gumption. 
you took the risk. And they did not, they, they did not, uh, and that's why. So that's perhaps, you know. That's a good uh, comment. Yeah, you know, they said, uh, I did take risk. I took a lot of risk, lots of, I came to United States with $40 in my pocket and one-way ticket. And yeah. if I did something happen, if I got sick, I don't know what I would do. <laughs> so, and then before I came, I, all people told me that uh, very cold weather, a lot of people get sick, and I came in the early 60s, and U.S. was not that well known for Indian students. They used to go to England, and uh, so I took a lot of risk. Also, I came to a place completely unknown. I came to Connecticut. Inverse How did you happen to pick? Well, that's, a, that's a, always a story. Okay. Uh, I used to work for the government after I finished uh, my and you major in engineering. engineering. Okay. Yeah, I majored in engineering. So I for, let me go back. Why I went to that college, and then I finished intermediate science, and uh, then, you know, if I had my way, my if I didn't have to worry about my family, I would perhaps go in arts, you know, English or Bengali, because that was my inclination. I used to like art, literature. I used to like uh, politics, you know, those kind of history, and uh, because that's what I, my mother, uh, not being a scientist, that's what I learned most, you know. I read a lot, in the literature, you know, very, uh, you know, lots of things I read, and that's what, and history I read, you know, geography, and so, uh, but I, I, uh, serious, I had to think about my family, but also I did not want to go to work right away. I wanted to do things. Can so uh, I wanted to go to engineering, only civil engineering, because at that time India was just got independence and uh, there are lots of big dams and bridges and factories are being built. And our prime minister at the time was Nehru, was a very broad-minded, progressive man going around that India's uh, temples will be the this uh, dams and bridges and factories will be our new temples and uh, and civil engineering sure. was the uh, way to do, go uh, lots of irrigation canals being built uh, lots of things were being done and uh, so I started uh, I wanted to go to civil engineering I didn't know any any other engineering anyway and then uh, uh, I looked around all engineering colleges at that time, they were residential. I could never, never expect to go to a residential college, because that's beyond. I could even pay tuition, you know, anywhere. So I applied. Only place that was available for uh, poor families or middle class Bengali families to send their children to engineering school was Jadapur University. It was far from my home. I had to take a bus to go to a, to a place, a station, and then from there I take a tram car, street car, to another railroad station, and there I take a train to go to that place. It was okay, but in the, in the winter nights, coming back was pretty bad, <laughs> three trips. So, there, was, there are hostels, there are, there are dormitories, but I, my family could not uh, pay for. In fact, I, I, I was Jadupur all along, scholarship. In f and also I used to get some uh, expense money, but not much. Uh, and I, um, I, I had the, 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 the uh, uh, what should I say, the uh, lots of uh, friends I had, and I used to stay with my friends. Sure. And in fact, just last time I was in India, uh, in February, I wanted to go, uh, I did not keep track with a lot of my colleagues, and you know, I got so involved in this country. And uh, so I wanted to go visit uh, with um, at the, the university I went to. I wanted to visit the president of the university because I'm thinking of doing something, uh, some endowment. I'm not too rich, but I'm not a rich period, but I, have, I, right. I, I can afford Thinking it. Thinking along that line, yeah. right. And uh, uh, so wanted to visit with him, but I did not know how, uh, instead of writing directly, I started to find somebody who knew. One of my colleagues who used to be dean of engineering at that place, my classmate, 
but he has retired some time ago. So I told my friend, whom I still have contact, find someone. So he looked around this way, that way, and he contacted my, f my other friend. He said, I don't have any contact, but I know one person who has a lot of contacts. Uh, he was in the university in geog uh, geology department, a professor, he's retired, but he's a secretary, you know, like a board of trustees or something somewhere. You may contact him. And so my f other friend co contacted him, called him up and said, I'm trying to do that, kind of con contact. He said, who is your friend? So he said, Kumar S. Sinha. He said, Kumar S. Sinha? Good God, I'm trying to get all of him for 50 years. He was a good friend of mine. Of course, anybody who wants to meet in, in, in my part of India, I would be able to do that. So I went back. He arranged for a gathering of all my years. You know, I was also a very well-known student. I was the, the uh, they called general secretary of the union. I was in politics, deep into politics, elections, this, that notoriety, lots of things I did. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I have a checkered career, uh, that sort of. So they had all, all my friends that came, whom I have not seen for 50, more than 50 years. And just incredible, just, uh, you know, deja vu, lived you know, all over again. So I was talking to them and telling that how, you know, it happened and they asked me, why, what do you think of Jadapur? What, what did you, you know, exactly like, why did you come to Jadapur? I said that uh, I, I gave a lot of hard time to my president at that time. He was very well known. He passed away. He was very well known in India. Uh, he became minister with Indira Gandhi, you know, very, very well known figure. But anyway, he was the, we call rector, right. we used to call, but he's president. He was, you know, contrib you know, American context. So I said, uh, uh, for a few months I stayed at the university after I finished as a junior lecturer. So at the time, this Tiguna Ashen, the rector, saw me. He knew me, of course. And he said, in Bengali, he said, but I'll try to translate, he said, uh, with a lot of love and affection, he said, uh, you hopeless guy, you don't understand, without Jadupur, poor and middle-class Bengali families could never send their sons and daughters to become engineers. And, and that's true. It's, it's changed now. In India, there are engineering schools sprouting all over. There, you know, you can do lots of things. But those days, it was not right. possible. So I'm very indebted. You know, not only me, there are many, many poor families that children are doing very well. Who were able to go to that school. That school, and they're doing very well. Okay. Even today, you know, in the National Academy of Engineering, American National Academy of Engineering, I have gone to the, the, the well, Indians. Right. There are many are from my school. Very good. Very so good. they have done, you know, it's a, so basically all the hutpa, you know, who has the, can take the risk and uh, can take the, the difficult uh, time, you know, it's, it's hard. And I, did, I couldn't buy books, and uh, I used to borrow from my friends. Did they have a library? Cause you'd yeah, library. I used to take books. But you like to have your own books. So you can yeah, you do. Yeah. But I never bought books. No. Never. With notes and uh, with, uh, uh, you know, I remember only book I bought. Only one book in the entire, four, four years in engineering school, thermodynamics book. <laughs> I never bought anything else, always borrowed our notes and things of that nature. But I had a lot of good friends, right. and I stayed. You know, as a matter of fact, this man, who is a secretary of the National Council of Education, who arranged for, uh, you know, they had a reception for me, get together. I used to stay at his home. His big sister used to leave some food in the night for me, and uh, I, I have lots of very memories good. of kindness, you know. I, so I said that a lot of kindness of my friends that I survived that difficult period. And, and even you never forgot oh, and you appreciated no. it. Oh, no, absolutely. And, and they know and, that. And, and uh, it's just incredible that people, 
have done things for me and they were there and then uh, there was a, a guy then not all poor families there are also people used to come for many other reasons sure. there was one guy there and in fact I was there was a big gathering I asked uh, someone have you ever seen Siddhartha Ganguly and there was a man in the behind he said here I am I couldn't recognize him because I haven't seen him for, since 1961 so uh, he said, here I am. And I said to everybody who was telling that he, there, his family, they had, they were very wealthy families. And uh, he, he, I used to stay with him. You know, they used to provide food, shelter. So anyway, so that way I came, even when I came to the United States, I had, so how it happened in the United States? I used to work for government and I had a, we had a statistician, and he was my friend. And he, one day I went to his home. He was uh, finished uh, application form. I said, hey, what are you doing? He said, I'm thinking I'm going to the United States. I'm feeling, I said, what are you doing? What? University of Connecticut. He said, by the way, there is another extra application. Do you want to complete? I filled it up. And then, then, then they get, I got admitted. I don't have no money. So I negotiated with the university. I don't know whether those things would be possible or not anymore. I negotiated with the university and with the department chairman or whoever, civil engineering, that assistantship. Even assistantship, I didn't have money to go, even to pay the upfront dues. So I said, I will do that after I come there, you know, I'll come. And then I had to find money to, for travel. To get there. To get there. Travel, that was another, I, I, I got it from some uh, charitable place, you know. Yeah. From, I, I paid the money back, by the way. I, after I came here, <laughs> a few years, he gave the money with interest. And then, uh, which is a very small amount, but Gosh. still, you know, I. But you got it when you needed difference. it. Big difference. And then when I came to university, I, I came to the dormitory. They allowed me to stay in a dormitory because I came Saturday, Saturday, Sunday. Monday, I said, let me stay. Monday, I, I, I will arrange for this and that. You know, all those things were possible those days because there are too many foreign students, etc. And there was a lady who was the, the, you know, sort of in charge, a very kind lady. She even allowed me to go to the, you know, cafeteria, eat, etc. all on credit. <laughs> Then morning, Monday morning, I went to talk to the, in, the department chairman, and I said, "This is my situation, and uh, can I, can you give me advance?" You know, <laughs> this is incredible. They said, "Well, we never did this ever." So this and that, but anyway, I managed to do that. So assistantship money I get, they would take money out of that for my tuition, it's or whatever the fees and the dormitories, etc. And, and I, I did very well. I was very successful in the University of Connecticut, and I did my PhD. And uh, did, you, did you get an assistantship there, though? Absolutely. Okay. Assistantship, and uh, all four, year, four years, I did very well. I Good. was uh, very successful. And then uh, uh, I, I look back, and um, uh, I see in university now, University of Connecticut, their uh, newsletters and this, that, that they very proudly say that their, their history of 100 years, they have five students became member of the academy. I'm one of them. <laughs> I'm the only civil engineering, and they are electrical. The rest of them are electrical. So, you know, I, I did my best, you know, uh, th throughout. And then I met my wife in Connecticut. I, I was she a student? Yeah, she was a student, and she was a much better student than I was. And uh, <laughs> but she she gave up uh, her uh, academic career. She was an university scholar. That means uh, the University of Connecticut had that program. Uh, the summary has done first three years exceptionally all, all A's and exceptionally well. Then fourth year, you know, your five, senior year you don't have to take regular classes, you just decide whatever you do. And of course, you were all free, and they even gave a scholarship to the school she came from, you know, in her honor. So, but we got married, and uh, uh, she, and uh, although she, you know, after coming, after many years, 
We have five children. After our children all grew up, she decided to go back to you know, Purdue and took all the math. She was a history and English major, but uh, she took all kinds of math, trigonometry and, and all those things, and uh, calculus, et cetera. And then, uh, but she did that, basically, she was doing those to help my youngest child who was dyslexic, so to help him. And uh, so she took those. I didn't spend much time with my children, but my wife did. Okay. And uh, just like you have different yeah. things to do. Well, right? the spirit right. in India. My mother taught right. you know, here. My daughter, my sure. wife, and then uh, then she decided to go to nursing at Purdue. Uh, and so she finished nursing. She she's a registered nurse, but only registered nurse, perhaps in the state of Indiana, who never worked. <laughs> she she took her exam and all those license sure. fees and all she gives but she she hasn't worked. It's okay. Yeah. So that's the, it's a, it's a very interesting story. But uh, when I tell my children, they don't really appreciate that I had a hard time. I didn't have a pair of shoes. You know, I used to walk barefoot, and but I always never felt that we were poor. Because my family was education. My family was very. Uh, uh, we, I came from a very uh, educated family and uh, very, uh, what shall I say, uh, 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 my grandfathers, uh, my, both sides, and my father, they're all highly educated and uh, went to very good schools. And uh, like um, you all know, there was a poet in, in Bengal, in India, who had Nobel Prize in 1913. He had a school which was a very uh, well-known family used to send their children there. My uncles and my father, they all went to that school because my grandfather, my father's father, and also my mother's father, they're high government officials. It just so happened my father did not manage to uh, have resources because he was a, he was a poet. He, he, didn't, he was a very impractical person. And I look back and I think, you know, geez, you know, what a naive and impractical uh, person he was. And uh, never really, uh, or he was not worldly enough. And, and uh, uh, just, uh, but he was very uh, knowledgeable in, in, in literature, in music, and right. stuff like that. And he passed it and shared that with us. Yeah, with, with I had. You know, that. So if somebody asked me, do you have any regret? I say, yes, I do have regret. I never really, I always thought, well, let me do this thing. I'll go back to literature. But I read. I always read. And I, right. I pick feel I'm very well read. I feel. And, uh, but I never managed to. Uh, I used to write when I was in, a student. In fact, I used to write quite a bit and published. Uh, I used to do for newspapers and others. But after I came here, it, the... The, the desire to, or to, the, the zeal to, to do well, and that uh, took over, and then my family, you know, started, and sure. I couldn't take a risk. So, you know, you, know, you have to be It's all come out well, very yeah. well. Uh, well. Hopefully. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's, that's the way my parents, I told you, and my siblings, they are all in around Calcutta. They, they have uh, done, you know, uh, uh, of all my siblings, my big sister was my big uh, supporter. In fact, I grew up, as I said, I didn't go to school, and uh, I was sort of a sickly child, and the other kids would tease me, you know, bully me and tease me. My sister used to uh, shoo them away and yell and scream at them to get away, get lost, and she was my big supporter. And I used to do a lot of things, a lot of things, and a lot of unusual things I used to do. I had a set up a school of uh, mid servants, you know, the, in India there are a lot of, still a lot of disparity and lots of uh, families don't have education. Mm -hmm. So even as a student, you know, you know, a high school student, I used to, I set up a school for domestics and their children and my sister was my assistant and I, I used to, I ran a library and, uh, uh, you know, in my home. Uh, we're poor, but we had a lot of books. <laughs> and uh, we did, you know, I tell my grandchildren, 
I started to read newspaper that uh, family stories go. When I was three years old, I used to read headlines in a you know, Bengali newspaper. So we used to get newspaper. I, had, I set up a library for these children. And uh, my sister always, always, all my endeavors that I did, she was my big supporter. I, I started handwritten magazine, you know, mag I would have pictures and this, that, my parents writing, my sisters, my friends, and other people that I knew, you know. I was always uh, sort of a object of affection of people a little older, and they liked me, you know, they used to write things for me, encourage me all along. And I used to take that and I prepare. Every so often, I would have a handwritten magazine with pictures, uh, poems, stories, and I used to distribute. You know, it's very unusual, you know, when I look back. And my sister was my script. She, she would, you know, You're her good handwriting. Team. <laughs> good team, oh, all along, all along. My, my, yeah. oh, oh, she passed away. And uh, so that's uh, that my, uh, my elder brother, I still have contact with. My si two sisters, younger sisters, I still have contact, I see them. Mm -hmm. And they are all their families, they are all doing well. And uh, so in, in the education, when uh, uh, my uh, school, the three years I school, my two best teachers that I had, they're both uh, literature, uh, but, you know, uh, Bengali literature. And they were very, very strongly supportive. And uh, I did very well in Bengali, you know, my mother tongue, that, that uh, exam. And uh, uh, so that always had that flavor. I used to uh, do lots of essay competitions, lots of debating, and those things were uh, all kinds of uh, stuff now, competition I used to do, and I win prizes, and th from there I used to get book prizes, you know, they used to give old days prizes sure. or books. He, you select books and they would give money to buy those books. Yes, I was involved in student organizations, and uh, uh, in fact I was too much, I guess, and uh, uh, in, in the, when I was in engineering college, I was uh, very uh, politically uh, involved, and uh, uh, I was the head of the union, student union, is a elected uh, position, and uh, I had uh, you know, some college professors, I have some uh, inspiring teachers. Mm -hmm. That's perhaps the key of doing well, I think. This, if you can get a good teacher who can, it doesn't matter what area, good teacher can s inspire you. And that's that's uh, and a lot and a lot for the long haul. Long haul, you know, and become friend. I used to visit them, you know, all along, and uh, I I was in now why civil engineering and why I got interest in transportation. Right after I finished, f after a few years in, in the university, I went to work for government of West Bengal, and there are a lot of refugees who were coming from Bangladesh. You know, at that time it was East Pakistan millions of refugees and refugee settlements. I started working for these settlements and there I got interested in urban planning and in uh, human settlements. And from there, this whole circulation, transportation, and municipal aspects, the sanitation, uh, you know, public health, and those kind of things, I got really interested. So when I came to Connecticut, I was really doing things in municipal engineering, lots of water, sanitation, wastewater, those kind of courses Which like to flow along, with what flow you along this right. human settlements. And then I specialized in PhD in ta transportation was a new field at that time. And I got into that and then uh, the computers were just coming so I uh, developed a, a, a digital computer simulation of traffic and freeways were just beginning at the time, and they were uh, they wanted to learn. Uh, we we had a need to learn how the freeways will operate safely and efficiently. So I put together one of the early digital simulators. Ten miles of uh, freeway could be simulated, and that's that's my that was my PhD dissertation. Although I moved away from that, 
over you know, every 10 years, I change my area of interest or emphasis within transportation. I did, then right after I finished uh, uh, UConn, I got a job at Market University in Milwaukee. And uh, Market was very good to me, very good. Just, uh, I, even today in, Mil in Milwaukee area, in Wisconsin, I have friends. I mean, close friends. They would do anything for me. In fact, people go, they, if they want something in Wisconsin, state of Wisconsin, people go, even people from Wisconsin, they go tell that Sina is a part of our, they say, oh, okay. If Sina is part, we'll work with you. <laughs> you know, in, in, in Wisconsin DOT, or there are a lot of regional planning commissions, they're very strong agencies. And there, I worked with them uh, uh, in Milwaukee area. While you were on the faculty at Milwaukee. While on faculty, I almost had a second job. I was their uh, system engineering consultant to develop all kinds of models: land use, housing, transportation. The man who was a director of that, he was a PhD from Wisconsin. He's a little, old, maybe, ten years older than I was, and he sort of liked me a lot. And he did a lot for me, even to, so I, I'm still in touch with him. He's an old man, but he's, uh, he would send me, you know, here, there, he would see my name and he would send me a little note telling, you know, encouraging things. So when I wrote a book, I sent a book to him and uh, copy to, you know, give him as a gift. And so he, he's retired, but he very he's still good. Keeping that stuff. Very, very good. And uh, the commission is a very, uh, strong agency. The director now is my former student. And in all entire Wisconsin state, I have former students, those who went to school at Marquette. And I used to teach a lot of, un it's an undergraduate school. I started master's program. At and Marquette. I, Marquette, and uh, in, in my area. And uh, you know, I used to get a lot of funding, lots of money, oof, lots of money I used to get. And uh, they did a lot for me in you know, the market too. They, they, it's uh, limited resources, but uh, they created lab, office spaces. I, when I left, I had 25 master students, so, you know, <laughs> and I had funding for all of them. So once in a while, in some conferences or, you know, here and there, I would see somebody and say, Professor Sena, remember me? And this guy is doing very well, some consulting and this, that. And last one time, I, one incident I remember in a conference, this guy had too many beers or something. I don't know what happened. All of a sudden, he stood up. There was a gathering. He stood up. He said, folks, I want to say something which I want to publicly acknowledge. This is the man who is the cause for my, this profession. He said he was in senior year. He's walking by the lobby, by the hall, in front of my office, and I saw him. I said, hey, uh, whatever his name, Tom, where are you going? Yeah. I said, come, come, come to my room. So I came, I shut the door. Apparently, I, he said, I talked to him. I came out, I already signed up in the dotted line, I'm a graduate student. <laughs> he said, I asked him, what are you going to do? He finished, he said, oh, I'm thinking of going back to Appleton, Wisconsin where my father's business, uh, but apparently I talked to him in coming to graduate school. But important thing he said, this guy, that I never regretted the decision. And I, you know, so that, th these are satisfactions, you know, these are, you know, I, I have advised many, many, many graduate students. And when I uh, tell this, uh, I'm not so much the last couple of years, and uh, when I used to talk to the students and I used to tell that, you know, I have not heard anybody coming back to me and telling me that you have ruined my life by, fo by telling me to come to graduate school. <laughs> I've never heard. <laughs> so maybe there are people who are, you know, but nobody has come back to me, <laughs> told that you have ruined my life, making me to come to graduate school. They've not school. vocalized it. <laughs> no, they have not. Uh, only I have heard good things. So. I'll tell you, if you want to do well, you should go to graduate school, at least master's. So right. they have done, and 
And as, as, as a matter of fact, a uh, few days ago, I got a little note, email, from the former prime minister of Egypt. That's the guy. He sent me, he said, he was in Netherlands. He was being recognized by some group for his yeoman activities. And he said, I just gave an interview to the press. And there I express, and to you, I re-express my gratitude to you for all the things you have done for me. So, and he sent some pictures. He said that he's still involved with the Arab Academy of this, that, and you know, a few things he said. So I, 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 I feel I take a lot of comfort uh, knowing that uh, uh, I had some some uh, influence on you know some young people and men, women, and uh, around and on the world. And uh, I could have done perhaps more if I had gone some other place, some other circumstances. If I were born. But you just get only one shot, and you do the best. <laughs> you take what you get. Yeah, you, you, you just uh, play the hands you have. I had difficult hands, which I cannot, I'm telling you. I don't want to publicize it uh, much, I don't tell. I try to tell my children, and uh, well, they, they, I, I don't know if they appreciate it or not, but um, they ask me to write down these things someday uh, for my grandchildren. Uh, but I had difficult time. Very difficult, oh, you know. Right. When I was growing up, uh, I didn't have, uh, you know, uh, you know, clothes. I used to borrow from my friends, clothes, to go, even shoes, to go for interview for this and that. But you know, that, but again, those friends are very good, very kind, right. very very kind. They all helped. Oh, yeah, right. they yeah. helped. Okay. So that's uh, I. As I said, uh, I did all uh, college. Campus life. I used to. You know, I don't know how much time we have. Well, let me. Um, what I'm going to. I try to keep this a little more than an hour. So I think we'll probably do this in two parts. So uh, yeah. why don't we talk a little bit about how you happened to come to Purdue in your early days, and then, if it's okay with you, we could uh, maybe stop at the research and okay. then pick it up from there. Does that sound agreeable? Sure, sure. sure. Okay. Uh, Purdue. I was at Marquette. I was very happy. Very doing very well. Uh, uh, but uh, 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 also, I I started to wonder how far I can go with the market. I had a lot of support there. I got a, a tenure did, promotion quickly. Did they have any other schools of engineering in addition to civil? Or? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Electrical, okay. Uh, mechanical. Okay. They're, they're very good engineering school uh -huh. and uh, very, very strong engineering, undergraduate engineering. Now it's full fledged uh, PhD. Lots of changes have taken place. And I was doing well. I got promoted in 1972 in four years. And uh, then uh, I was very well taken care of. But then I had a friend uh, I knew in the inverse of Wisconsin. They sort of always suspected they wanted to get rid of me. They wanted to take me out of the state line, somewhere uh, other, other part of, you know, outside of the Wisconsin state line because I was a big competition. And they came, and one of them, they're still friends, you know, we joke, that they said, hey, Purdue has a position. And they, they uh, knew this man from Purdue, Gil Satterley. He was at Purdue. I said, I talked to Gil. Gil, I said, I said, why don't you go? They said, no, no, no. Uh, uh, I'm, no. This, they said, it, it will fit you well, this, that, and some or other they talked me into. So I talked to Gil. Gil talked to Harold Michael, who used to be here. And uh, uh, then uh, at the TRB, we have a big conference, Transportation Research Board is a part of the National Academy. And there I saw Harold. Harold talked to me. Harold said, oh, I hear a lot of good things. Uh, I just got a TRB award at the time for writing a paper. So uh, my, my price was high. You know, I was hot at the time. And it's some of the work I did in digital simulation. So uh, said that we like you to come to Purdue. And you know, he talked me. And I said, hmm. And my mother-in-law, uh, she, you know, Lutheran, and they did not like the prospect of my entire life living in Catholic school. My wife is a Catholic now after her parents passed away. So uh, she, uh, she, she sort of wanted me to move from, uh, from Marquette. So they started to tell me. She went to Ohio State, so she knew of Purdue, you uh, know, Big Ten. She said, oh, no, you, Purdue, oh, boy, you should go to Purdue. Oh. So 
I thought, okay. So I came and interviewed at Purdue. They offered me a job. That was in uh, 1972. I rejected the offer. I said, no, I don't want to go because Marquette, when they found out, they said, no, you cannot do that, this, that, you stay at, you know, all, I had tremendous pressure. Then, 72, I was offered, I didn't go. Then, another year, they came back to me, Purdue, said, look, no, we'll change the offer, you know, we'll make it different and this, that. Then, I thought, maybe it is my last chance. <laughs> I should really take it. So, I decided to come. And, and I came, and I don't regret it. It was very, Purdue was very good. And I worked with Harold Michael, you know. Now, was he the head when you came? No, oh. McLaughlin was the head. So that's why I told you, McLaughlin, when I became a member of the academy, I told, McLaughlin sent me a note. You know, he was not very mobile at that time. Email, he sent. Very nice. You know, McLaughlin all along, he used to encourage me. But always a little, uh, little needle, little, uh, little joke. So he sent... So I replied back to him. I said, look, you hired me. Ever since, I'm trying to prove it to you that you didn't make a mistake. He wrote back. He said, everybody must have an opportunity to make, should be allowed to have at least one mistake. <laughs> so, uh, no, Harold became head 1978, and uh, I was 74. I was uh, promoted to full professor in 78, and... Uh, uh, so then, uh, you know, then uh, uh, it's very well, you know, you know there was a, uh, right after I got promoted, Provost Haas, Felix Haas, has called, called me and said that he wants me to be associate director of uh, our Center for Public Policy. We had a Center for Public Policy, he used to give degree, Master of Science. And uh, I said, uh, can I think about it? He said, yes. And I came back. When I, I said, no, I hesitated because it was, I'm very busy. He said, you know, uh, you are busy. I know you are busy. And that's why I want you to be. Because if you're not, I don't want somebody to do this thing who is not busy. If I want something get done, I go to people who are busy. So I was very, very deeply flattered. <laughs> and I took it. Well, uh, I then you know, quit after a while. But uh, what was the center? What was it? Was it affiliated with? No, no, I no. have that on my list to ask you. Was it no, affiliated no, no. with? No, no. It was a very unique thing. You know, it was a another school. It's a, it it had its own degree granting authority. Hmm. Who is to give degree in Master of Science in Public Policy and Public Administration, okay. and MSPPPA. But the problem I found quickly that it did not have its own faculty. So we, uh, uh, there are 10 positions were given by the provost to all the schools, affiliated schools. You know, all the people who are hired, we hired them. They went to the schools. They melted away. After a while, you don't see them. So it's a, it's a difficult thing. And Purdue was very, uh, very, very regimented at the time. It was very hard to cut to the schools. Now it, it, some things are possible. So that's, uh, that's the way it was. Okay, so the Purdue I came, I worked in the area of transportation, and uh, I got promoted in 78. You know, I used to have tenure at Marquette, but I lost the tenure, came to Purdue. But uh, 1974 I came. I think 1975 or so, no, uh, I think 75, uh, fall or I got a letter from provost saying you'll be given tenure you know two years from now but the, the tenure will be effective two years from now but I got a letter that you you have a tenure but two, it will be effective another one and a half or two years from now <laughs> so the guy I got a letter I have a tenure but I have to live that long to get the tenure then I got promoted in 78, mm -hmm. and uh, then uh, I, then, you know, Harold retired, uh, not retired, Harold went to school head. I, uh, you know, I, I, I got, uh, Harold used, at that time, School of Civil Engineering used to have very structured uh, administration, we used to have area. They're like fiefdoms, uh, transportation area, uh, structure area. 
I became head of the structure, you know, transportation area, which Harold used to be. So I was there for 20 years, head of the transportation area. Then we hired someone, Fred Mannering, became school head. He was my student, master student at Purdue. And then he went to MIT to get PhD. Then he taught at University of Washington. He was their school department chairman. We hired him. So when he came, I, tell, I told Fred uh, that I don't want to be school area head because I work under him. The, because, you know, if anything you do, they will say, ah, Fred is doing things for Sina because Sina he was his major professor. <laughs> I said, I don't want, I want to have a firewall between you and me. I, I don't want to deal with you at all. So then Fred, after all, after all this, Fred decided to do away with all this uh, area head business and uh, he changed, made everything less powerful. Area head became but I quit by that time. Now we have group coordinators, they come and go. But old days, these area heads had lots of power. Lots of, they had complete authority over all the people, you know, they, they were the mandarins and they were all the other slaves and swordsmen. Uh, and uh, if the area head decided, decided not to promote someone, the guy could never get promoted. You know, those kind of things. There are a lot of corruption in that sense, in which I did not think is very good. Mm. But um, uh, in the meantime, I went, I was at MIT for, as a visiting faculty, visiting professor, and there I, I saw, uh, saw certain things that I thought, no, that's around the same time. I, I quit uh, uh, right. 1980, I went to MIT. We'll stop here then.